what is the question that is approaching the oh god everyone asks me this question oh yeah that's a good question so uh probably how hard was it to find the carpet on the enterprise d um and it's the carpet i mean that was the hardest part of i mean it's not it's locating carpet's not a hard thing it was just that specific one from the you know 1987. um but there's been a lot of talk about yeah how hard was it for you to find like people are hyping up how hard it was and it's really just like the timeline that we had and you know what was available and you know when stuff's not readily available there's a drama but um that's probably been the most asked question i remember when because by the of course by the time the episode drops i mean that's nearly nearly two years after you know it you'd been at least in production if not wrapped at that stage right yeah yeah i had done three shows since that since we wrapped up picard so i was i'm on like you know i'm in a different world but even now i'm still doing podcasts about the show that we did two years ago you know so it's that's also very strange <laughs> it's good. As it, is it like is it kind of like a moment that's been like frozen in time for you now it's like you know kind of like you know people talk about oh do you remember that yes i get asked about it every single day Totally. I'm like, I'm not, Star Trek's going to follow me around forever now. Like I'm in the, you know, they welcome me into the family, but like my friends and family, I'm like, hey, look at this article. Um, look, I did this video and nobody cares because I've been talking <laughs> about it for two years. So that's kind of funny, but uh, it's true. I'm, I mean, I'm going to, I'm accepting it and I'm happy with it. The shape of the Elios bridge, that presented a bit of a challenge as, as well, didn't it? Yeah, so that was one of those sets that we were reusing. So they they gave us, um, we're going to put that set where Soong's lab was from season two. Mm. And then um, don't take anything apart, just use the walls and turn that into a bridge. And Soong's lab, so it was Soong's lab and then Soji's room was like downstairs. Um, but the thing's a square. And so Dave was like, all right, so, you know, come up with a plan to, to switch this over to a, like a, Kind of like an alien esque, um, raven esque, like a you know, a hundred year old or fifty year old um, bridge, and so start doing research. And so all the research I was doing, all the bridges are circles. Like you know, they kind of have that. I don't know if circles are just more futuristic or what, but I was like, dude, there are no squares anywhere. It's a square, a square room, and you know, and so it's like the square peg into the round hole. You know, that's actually what we had to deal with. Um, and so we did curvify it a little bit, like we kind of clocked the corners off and we came up with a plan that Dave liked. Um, and then when John Eves was designing this ship, he actually squareified the top of the exterior of this of ship, kind of where their view screen would be. So that it, it was kind of a, a round ship with like a round bridge on the top with the little view screen. Um, so he squareified it to kind of match where we were so that people weren't like, oh, that doesn't, you know, your VFX doesn't match your actual set but i was and that was my first set so i'm like if this if this sucks and the fans don't like it and dave doesn't like it and it doesn't look like star trek so then i was like well the ship it's not starfleet right it's just like an alien ship like they kept giving us like you know the red blinky lights and all that um which alien did but also um tos did you know that those were still a thing in the older ships i'm like so it's not it's not starfleet and then <laughs> terry was like no it's yeah it was starfleet um or you know federation, <laughs> federation is what it was um and i'm like it was then they're like oh it's decommissioned so i'm like okay so now we can play with like it's decommissioned it's just the hull the ship outside looks like something but then the insides all the stuff that they bought or like traded for you know and had so there's some new technology there's some old technology you've got the vintage l cars like it actually really worked out but i was sweating before this episode aired like what are people gonna say and I like logged into Twitter and looked and everyone's like, oh, we love it. Oh, oh thank God. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it was, it's stressful. And I don't know if I'm like that. They're drawing me now. Like, somebody drew like a fan art and it's like me pulling my hair out. And I'm like, is that what people think of me? <laughs> there, there was a question I want to ask. So in it was 2021 uh, at Vegas and obviously not name is there was an image of the bridge uh, i think this is gem this this is well known knowledge at this point an image of the bridge went out and obviously it was well before anything um just was there was there a mood because i know everyone was in separate parts of you know the country at that point but was there a mood that day of oh god oh yeah it was I a was few so, hours I was so mad because ah. we had we spent all this time being secretive and i'm being secretive with the carpet dealers and like nobody knows what I'm working on. Like I tried so hard to keep it quiet. 
Uh, and then it wasn't, uh, I can't remember who it was but that, that had like, they were at Vegas and they were doing a little slideshow and they're like, oh, um, it was only up for a, a second. You know, and it's like, yeah, a fan is going to take a photo of that and post it on the internet because I was working, I think I was in Atlanta working on a show and the screenshot of that post, um, which had been taken down, mm -hmm. was sent to me. They're like, hey, can you believe this? And I was like, I can't believe that happened. Like, that was bad. You know, but it's like we had spent all this time trying to keep it a secret. And even like Jörg, the, uh, the German Star Trek fan, like, I, I, oh, yeah, I credit him for for really helping us keep it, keep it, be honest. I didn't even really tell him like he had a, a suspicion that we were going to do something with the Enterprise D. But I had this whole like it's it's a museum and we're, we're going to see it briefly, like blah, blah, blah. Like, I'm sure he was suspicious, but we didn't he didn't know like in how how it was going to be used. He had just done all this research for us. Even he didn't know, you know, and, and he said he was surprised. So, like, really, we were saving it for the fans to be surprised. Because if you watch these videos, like the unveiling videos, like in episode nine, you know, the, the reaction videos, it tears me up because I'm like, this is amazing. Like, this is really like that. That's the phenomenon, I think, that chased us all around after season three finished. But um, yeah, to find out to find out that that had happened in Vegas, I didn't even know what Vegas was. Like, that was my first like. Like, oh, there's a convention in Vegas. Like, maybe you should go because I went last year or this year. Um, but yeah, it was like, I can't believe that happened. <laughs> it's 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 just it must be that's just that horrible fine line where, uh, you know, you are you, you've done this amazing thing. And as a fan, it's incredible. And as an artist, it's incredible. And you cannot talk about it for the best reasons, because it's going to be a lovely surprise. But you yeah. cannot talk about it to anyone. And you know, but fortunately someone, someone cracked her, you know, um, right. well, and... I told my mom, but my mom didn't care. She like, I'm like, mom, you like, this can't get out, but I like, I'm working <laughs> on this thing. It's really important. And she's like, oh, that's nice. Like, like not a care in the world, not telling anybody, but like, yeah, it's impossible for people to not like, I'm sure everybody told their spouses and like, there's 400 people that worked on the set. So all of those people know about it. So the fact that we kept that quiet, um, but it's, it's, uh, it, you know, it, when you're in a public setting, you have to know that it's going to get put on, like we, on the internet, like we were doing a presentation and somebody was live tweeting every slide that we did, Yep. you know? So then it's like, oh, well now we've got to be careful that we don't show anything that we're not allowed to, <laughs> you know? <laughs> the, the back wall of the bridge of the Enterprise D. So this was, so this is different this, uh, this time for as, as true and as accurate as it is to the filming set of, you know, the Enterprise D from next gen. Uh, obviously, technology has moved on a little bit. So the back wall, this was done quite differently or like di same, but. Yeah, so the, the structure is exactly the same. Hmm. Um, what was different was um, when Mike explained to me how they made every blinking light had its own light on a channel and um, their TV screens were just little CRTs. So there was only like a little square in that big aft where you would have, you know, motion. And then some of the things they had these like we light wheels where you could turn turn the wheel on and then the lights would go. And whenever he explained all of that, I was like, oh, there's no way I'm going to be able to do that. And Todd was uh, pretty um, adamant about working a screen in because he said, well, we can control every blinking light if you have the whole thing as a screen. And I just I haven't seen anything that's that square, you know, because mm. the aft is pretty square. And, you know, when you look at screens, they're they're pretty like, you know, 16, nine. So I was I against it until he showed me that there was a screen that fit. So he found these these 50 inch screens, and I, I think I had like 54 inches of space. So so that um, those fit perfectly. And then what what I don't want to do is to cram all the graphics into his screen. So I have a square, and then if the screen only does this, then all my graphics are stuck there. So I wanted to make sure that the graphics were accurate. Uh, and the only thing that so, so basically what we do is we, we fit the screens in and then we put plexi in front of them so that nobody messes the screen up. Hmm. And then we'll print black on the reverse side of the plexi to bezel out. So the black will will hide like the edges of the TV and they'll do whatever, but we can actually print graphics on the bezel. So there's at the top, there's this like, like long thin line that didn't fit on the TV screen, but I was able to fit it on the bezel so that everything fit in the aspect ratio and everything was was there, but the cool thing about that is now Mike has full control over here's what the graphic is gonna be. Maybe we'll make these things blink this time. The power up sequence that they did, you would not have been able to do that at all with with the technology that they had 
in the you know late 80s early 90s so we had giving us that control was actually um the right call and so i'll give todd credit for fighting for that because i was like no we will do everything the way it was and then whenever they told me how much work it was going to be and then you know things now i've got to get the the fixtures guys to wire up all of these lights individually and you know there's a lot of things that could go wrong so having control because playback is in, in with the art department so we could control all of those graphics um that ended up being I think really useful to us and then i had printed on that plexiglass i printed the reflection killer so that right. um, you, you can get all those sexy shots you know these are super detailed super um if not expensive certainly hard to source sets um was what why was jonathan frakes not given a sort of a bodyguard at all times to not sit on things <laughs> Oh man, he's gonna be mad at me. No, you can't. I mean, it's they're actors, right? And the actor and the director, like they, you let them do what they want. Um, the same thing, like the, there was a coffee cup brought on the Enterprise D, and it was held by Terry Metalis. And so, like, there's nothing I can do about that because he's the boss. So all I can do is when he puts it down, I can I can scarf it. Um, but yeah, they, you let them. They 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 do. They get to do what they want because they're they're you know in charge. But Frakes, yeah, there's no stopping that man. Like I watched him jump through the doorway over this whole staircase and then like land at the base of the stairs. And we were like, we had like, that was in the Ilios. <clears throat> we were like, oh, how many, like, do we need a railing for, for Sir Patrick? Like what, you know, what does he need? Like we're pretty conscious about making sure everything's accessible and like not trippable. So you don't want your main actor to trip. And like that first day Frakes went and jumped through the doorway and like leapt over the whole staircase and like landed on the ground. And we we're all standing there, like we had, we just were having this conversation about keeping the stairs safe, and the man like leapt, <laughs> like and it landed, and we were all we were all looking at him, right? And his knees qu quivered a little bit, but he was, you know, he's pretty spry. But yeah, there's no stopping him, so he can sit on whatever he wants, and then I'll be mad. We have to fix that <laughs> Liz, thank you very much. So for everyone who's listening and watching along, where is the best place to reach out to you, to see your work and to send you lots and lots of money uh, or uh, admiration? Uh, yeah, um, you, the social medias, I check all of those. So Twitter, Instagram. Um, I have a website, LizKlikowski.com. You guys can go there and find my details on there if you want. Thank you so much for watching this abbreviated version of this podcast. Now, if you go to our audio platforms, you will get the full version of this podcast with this guest. So we really, really appreciate you subscribing to that. And you're just awesome and wonderful. Thank you so much.